Section 1 of Chinese Poetry in English Verse. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Marianne Spiegel. Chinese Poetry in English Verse by Herbert A. Giles. Part 1. Dear Land of Flowers, Forgive me that I took these snatches from thy glittering wealth of song, and twisted to the uses of a book strains that to alien harps can ne'er belong. Thy gems shine pure in their native bed concealed, beyond the pry of vulgar eyes, and there, through labyrinths of language led, the patient student grasps the glowing prize. Yet many, in their race toward other goals, May joy to feel, albeit at second hand, Some far faint heart-throb of poetic souls Whose breath makes incense in the flowery land. H. A. G. Cambridge, October 1898 To a Young Gentleman Don't come in, sir, please. Don't break my willow trees, not that that would very much grieve me. But alack a day, what would my parents say? And love you as I may, I cannot bear to think what that would be. Don't cross my wall, sir, please. Don't spoil my mulberry trees. Not that that would very much grieve me. But alack a day, what would my brothers say? And love you as I may, I cannot bear to think what that would be. Keep outside, sir, please. Don't spoil my sandal trees. Not that that would very much grieve me. But a lack a day, what the world would say, and love you as I may, I cannot bear to think what that would be. Odes To a Man you seemed a guileless youth enough, Offering for silk your woven stuff. But silk was not required by you, I was the silk you had in view. With you I crossed the ford, And while we wandered on for many a mile, I said, I do not wish delay, But friends must fix our wedding day. Oh, do not let my words give pain, but with the autumn come again. And then I used to watch and wait to see you passing through the gate, and sometimes when I watched in vain, my tears would flow like falling rain. But when I saw my darling boy, I laughed and cried aloud for joy. The fortune-tellers, you declared, had all pronounced us duly paired. Then bring a carriage, I replied, and all away to be your bride. The mulberry leaf, not yet undone by autumn chill, shines in the sun. O oh, tender dove, I would advise, beware the fruit that tempts the eyes. O oh, maiden fair, not yet a spouse, list lightly not on lover's vows. A man may do this wrong, and time will fling its shadow o'er his crime. A woman who has lost her name is doomed to everlasting shame. The mulberry tree upon the ground now sheds its yellow leaves around. Three years have slipped away from me since first I shared your poverty, and now again, alas, the day. Back through the ford I take my way. My heart is still unchanged, but you have uttered words now proved untrue, And you have left me to deplore a love that can be mine no more. For three long years I was your wife, And led in truth a toilsome life, Early to rise and late to bed, Each day alike passed o'er my head. I honestly fulfilled my part, and you. Well, you have broke my heart. The truth my brothers will not know, So all the more their jibes will flow. 
I grieve in silence, and repine that such a wretched fate is mine. Ah, hand in hand to face old age. Instead, I turn a bitter page. Oh, for the river banks of yore, oh, for the much loved marshy shore, the hours of girlhood, with my hair ungathered, as we lingered there, the words we spoke that seemed so true. I little thought that I should rue. I little thought the vows we swore Would some day bind us two no more. Odes The Cricket The cricket chirrups in the hall, The year is dying fast. Now let us hold high festival Ere the days and months be past. Yet push not revels to excess, That our fair fame may be marred. Lest pleasures verge to wickedness, Let each be on his guard. Odes The Husbandman's Song Work, work, From the rising sun till sunset comes And the day is done, I plough the sod, and harrow the clod. And meat and drink both come to me, So what care I for the powers that be? Anonymous Yao's Advice With trembling heart and cautious steps Walk daily in fear of God. Though you never trip over a mountain, You may often trip over a clod. Anonymous Inscription on a Wash Basin Oh, rather than sink in the world's foul tide, I would sink in the bottomless main. For he who sinks in the world's foul tide In noisome depths shall for ever abide. But he who sinks in the bottomless main May hope to float to the surface again. Anonymous Unpopularity Among birds, the phoenix. Among fishes, the leviathan holds the chiefest place. Cleaving the crimson clouds, the phoenix soars apace. With only the blue sky above, far into the realms of space. But the grandeur of heaven and earth is as naught to the hedge-sparrow race. And the leviathan rises in one ocean to go to rest in a second, while the depth of a puddle by a humble minnow as the depth of the sea is reckoned. And just as with birds and fishes, so too it is with man. Here soars a phoenix, there swims a leviathan. Behold the philosopher, full of nervous thought, with a fame that never grows dim, dwelling complacently alone. Say, what can the vulgar herd know of him? Sung Yu, 4th century B.C. End of Part 1「Part 2 of Chinese Poetry in English Verse」by Herbert Giles. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Marianne. Neglected Green grows the grass upon the bank, The willow shoots are long and lank. A lady in a glistening gown Opens the casement and looks down. The roses on her cheek blush bright, her rounded arm is dazzling white. A singing girl in early life, And now a careless ruse wife. Ah, if he does not mind his own, He'll find some day the bird has flown. Mei Shang, 2nd century B.C. Parted the red hibiscus and the reed, The fragrant flowers of marsh and mead, 
All these I gather as I stray, As though for one now far away. I strive to pierce with straining eyes The distance that between us lies. Alas, that hearts which beat as one Should thus be parted and undone. May Shane. On the Death of His Father I look up. The curtains are there as of yore. I look down, and there is the mat on the floor. These things I behold, but the man is no more. To the infinite azure his spirit has flown, and I am left friendless, uncared for, alone, of solace bereft, save to weep and moan. The deer on the hillside caressingly bleat, and offer the grass for their young ones to eat, while birds of the air to their nestlings bring meat. But I a poor orphan must ever remain, my heart, still so young, overburdened with pain, for him I shall never set eyes on again. Tis a well-worn old saying which all men allow, That grief stamps the deepest of lines on the brow. Alas for my hair, it is silvery now. Alas for my father, cut off in his pride. Alas that no more I may stand by his side. O oh, where were the gods when that great hero died? Liu Hong Died B.C. 157. Amari a liquid. The autumn blasts drive the white scud in the sky. Leaves fade, and wild geese sweeping south meet the eye. The scent of late flowers fills the soft air above. My heart is full of thoughts of the lady I love. In the river the barges for a revel carouse Are lined by white waves which break over their bows. Their oarsmen keep time to the piping and drumming, Yet joy is as not, Alloyed by the thought that youth slips away And that old age is coming. Liu Qi, B.C. 157 to 87. Gone. The sound of rustling silk is stilled. With dust the marble courtyard filled. No footfalls echo on the floor. Fallen leaves in heaps block up the door. For she, my pride, my lovely one is lost and I am left in hopeless anguish tossed. Liu Qi The Autumn Fan O oh, fair white silk, fresh from the weaver's loom, clear as the frost, bright as the winter snow, see, friendship fashions out of thee a fan, Round as the round moon shines in heaven above. At home, abroad, a close companion thou, Stirring at every move the grateful gale, And yet I fear, ah me, that autumn chills, Cooling the dying summer's torrid rage, Will see thee laid neglected on the shelf, All thought of bygone days, like them bygone. The Lady Pan, 1st century B.C. Carpe Diem Man reaches scarce a hundred, yet his tears would fill a lifetime of a thousand years. When days are short and night's long hours move slow, why not with a lamp in search of pleasure go? This day alone gives sure enjoyment. This. Why then await tomorrow's doubtful bliss? Fools grudge to spend their wealth 
while life abides, and then posterity their thrift derides. We cannot hope, like Wang Ziqiao, to rise, and find a paradise beyond the skies. Anonymous, 1st century B.C. THE ELIXIR OF LIFE Forth from the eastern gate my steeds I drive, and, lo, a cemetery meets my view. Aspens around in wild luxuriance thrive, the road is fringed with fir and pine and yew. Beneath my feet lie the forgotten dead, wrapped in a twilight of eternal gloom, down by the yellow springs their earthly bed and everlasting silence is their doom. How fast the lights and shadows come and go! Like morning dew our fleeting life has passed. Man, a poor traveller on earth below, is gone, while brass and stone can still outlast. Time is inexorable, and in vain against his might the holiest mortal strives. Can we, then hope this precious boon to gain, by strange elixirs to prolong our lives? Or, rather quaff good liqueur while we may, and dress in silk and satin every day? Anonymous, 1st century B.C. A Firstborn The wanderer reaches home with joy from absence of a year and more. His eyes seek a beloved boy. His wife lies weeping on the floor. They whisper he is gone. The glooms of evening fall. Beyond the gate a lonely grave in outline looms to greet the sire who came too late. Forth to the little mound he flings, where wild flowers bloom on every side. His bones are in the yellow springs, his flesh like dust is scattered wide. O child who never knew thy sire, for ever now to be unknown, ere long thy wandering ghost shall tire of flitting friendless and alone. O son, man's greatest earthly boon, with thee I bury hopes and fears. He bowed his head in grief, and soon his breast was wet with rolling tears. Life's dread uncertainty he knows, but oh, for this untimely close. Kung Feng died A.D. 208 End of Part 2 and End of Chinese Poetry in English Verse by Herbert A. Giles